So when Henry Mosley developed the concept of the proton and subsequently uh, the concept of uh, atomic number, the scientific community decided to reorganize the elements of the periodic table in terms of atomic number or increasing atomic number. Remember that Mendeleev had ordered the elements in, in terms of increasing atomic mass. Now, it really didn't change much. The table doesn't look much differently than it would have if we kept it according to increasing atomic mass. But they found it a cleaner way to do things uh, to order the elements in terms of increasing atomic number. So you need to understand that's what periodic law is based on. It's the repeating properties or the repeating change in properties that occurs uh, as you move throughout the periodic table when the elements are ordered in terms of increasing atomic number. Now, uh, we'll go back to the analogy uh, between a, uh, the periodic table and a calendar. And really, a calendar is just a periodic table of days as opposed to a periodic table of elements. One period or row on a calendar is a week. A period lasts seven days on a calendar, right? It's 18 groups on the periodic table. It's seven days on a calendar. As we move across a period on the calendar or across a week, we go from Sunday to Saturday, and the properties of the days change. Why do the properties of the days change? Why is Sunday different than Monday? Well, Sunday I'm not at work, but I know that tomorrow I have to go to work. Monday I'm at work. Tomorrow I know I have another day of work. Why is that different than Friday? Well, Friday is my last day of work. I know that tomorrow I don't have to go to work, usually. And so there's, uh, there's different things I have to look forward to on different days and different things I'm looking forward to when that day comes around. Okay, looking forward to the next day. That's why the days of the week change. The properties of the days of the week change from Sunday through Saturday because of what you have to look forward to on those days. Well, now it's time to consider why the properties of the elements change and why that's periodic or repeating on the periodic table. Because when we get to the end of the week on a calendar, okay, we get to Saturday, we start over again. We go back to Sunday. And those properties repeat. And so it's periodic. That's why we say a calendar is just a, a periodic table of days. And the, and the, the properties of the days repeat. Every seven days, we start the cycle over. And what you have to look forward to on those days, you know, you go back to Sunday again, and you're looking forward to what's coming on Monday. So what's changing in the elements that causes this periodic change? Because when we start with every period, except period one, which we're going to ignore for now, Every other period starts with a metal, a group one metal, and every period then transitions from the metals to non-metals. So we end with a, we start in, in period two with lithium, a solid metal, and we end the period, our, our Saturday is neon, a gaseous non-metal. We go back to Sunday for period three, group one metal, right, sodium, and then we transition throughout the week to our Saturday, argon, a neon gas. So what's causing that? What's causing the change from metal to non-metal as we move across the periodic table? What's changing as we go down a group? What's causing those changes? What makes it periodic? And what I'm going to tell you is there's one of two things, and that's it. I've got two things listed here for across a group. I've got two things listed here for, I'm sorry, across a period, and two things listed for down a group. Okay, The two things that change are nuclear charge and number of energy levels. Those are responsible. One of them is responsible for every trend as we move across a period or as we move down a group. So let's start with across a period. Like the days of the week change right, from Sunday to Saturday and then start over again. Uh, when we know why that happens. The nuclear charge changes as we move across a period. So what you have to look forward to on a different on, on a day changes as you move across a week, the nuclear charge is what's changing as you move across a period. And the nuclear charge is increasing. We're always adding a proton. The number of energy levels is not increasing. It's not. So this is out. That's not a cause of the changes that are occurring as we move across a period. When we increase the nuclear charge, that means we're adding a proton. If we add a proton, we also add an electron. And you might be thinking to yourself, 
Okay, so that's going to make the elements larger as we move across a period. The atomic radius, the distance, all right, a radius is the distance from the center of an object to its outermost part. Uh, so the atomic radius is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost electrons. And you think, well, we're adding a proton and an electron. It's got to increase, right? The atomic radius must increase. It does not. What we observe is the atomic radius decreases. Now, how is that possible? Well, let me try to explain. When you add a proton and an electron, <clears throat> you have to consider where you're adding them. Now, Rutherford, when he did his gold foil experiment, determined that most of an atom is empty space because most of the alpha particles flew right through that gold foil to the X-ray film on the other side. And that's how he determined, based on that observation, most of the atom must be empty space. So let's consider the atom Dodger Stadium. Okay, who the Dodgers just so happen to be in the World Series and my favorite team. So if Dodger Stadium is an atom, that's a lot of space, that's a lot of room, that's a big volume. Now, how much of that space would be taken up by the nucleus? If Dodger Stadium is the whole atom, the nucleus would be like a fly on the pitcher's mound right here of Dodger Stadium. Think about that. The nucleus of an atom would be like a fly on the pitcher's mound at Dodger Stadium. It takes up almost no, no space. So even though you're adding an electron and adding a proton, the protons and neutrons in the nucleus, they have an infinitesimally small volume. Huge mass. It's virtually all of the mass of the atom, according to our models, <clears throat> is in the nucleus. But virtually none of the volume is taken up by the nucleus. It's, it's incredibly small, it's negligible, we could say. The volume of the nucleus is negligible, just like the mass of the electrons is negligible. We say that the, the, the nucleus is incredibly dense. That's the other part of Rutherford's gold foil experiment, is that some of the alpha particles were deflected at severe angles, so he said they must be hitting something dense, and he concluded that it, it's probably at the center, at the core. All right, think about density and the nucleus has an incredibly big mass right and an incredibly small volume making it very very dense so when you add a proton to the nucleus <clears throat> imagine it would be like adding a hair on the fly on the pitcher's mound in dodger stadium you're not going to see that it won't take up more space adding a hair to the fly won't increase the volume but it will increase the mass, and it's a super, super, uh, think of it like a super magnet for electrons because they have opposite charges, so they attract. So you're adding this massive, it's like a thousand pound hair to that fly. Very dense. Doesn't take up hardly any more space. But since it's a super magnet, it's pulling the electrons on the outside way more tightly. So it's pulling things in closer. So adding a proton and increasing the nuclear charge actually just increases the, uh, the tug-of-war, the protons winning the tug-of-war with the electrons. And adding that proton, adding that nuclear charge to the center, to the tiny center, massive center, just pulls things in more tightly, and it decreases the atomic radius. So as we move across a period, atomic radius decreases. Why? Because we are increasing the nuclear charge. And that adding a super magnet, a very tiny volume wise super magnet, a massive in terms of mass, but not volume, super magnet to that tiny center pulls those electrons in more tightly. That is the cause, the increase in nuclear charge for every single trend that occurs as we move across a period. It's the reason that we transition from metals to nonmetals. And it's the reason for every other trend. It is nuclear charge increasing as we move across a period. It has nothing to do with the number of energy levels because the electron we added, we're adding to the same energy level. And that massive proton at the center is going to pull it even closer. Now, when we move down a group, we have the same two factors. And in this case, going down a group, the nuclear charge, again, increases. However, so does 
the number of energy levels. And if you've ever played the game Euchre, okay, in, in, in the card game Euchre, it's an awesome game. Learned how to play that in high school. <clears throat> Somebody uh, determines the strongest suit for every hand. It's called, you, you call Trump. And whatever somebody calls as Trump is the strongest suit for that hand. So if I said clubs is Trump, then all of the cards in the suit clubs are higher than all of the cards in every other suit. So if you play the ace of hearts, which aces are high, right? The nine of clubs would trump your ace of hearts. That's where this, that saying comes from, from the game of Euchre. So you throw the ace of hearts, I lay down the nine of clubs. If clubs is trump, my nine beats your ace. Well, that's what I'm describing here. Both of these things could cause a change, cause the uh, properties to change in the elements, the nuclear charge increasing and the number of energy levels. But if both of them change, it's the number of energy levels that would be the trump card. Okay, so let's take a look. Very specifically, we're going to look at group 17. The first element in group 17, okay, we look at a nuclear charge of 9, that must be the element fluorine. Well, if we move down one element from fluorine down the group, we get chlorine. And the nuclear charge for chlorine is 17. Well, that's almost double 9. So has the nuclear charge increased? Absolutely, it has. But something else has also changed. Here on fluorine, there's one, two energy levels. For chlorine, it's one, two, three. So in other words, if I'm looking at fluorine here on the left, these two aren't to scale. I should have picked a bigger picture of chlorine or made it bigger. If I wanted to, to add another energy level to fluorine, I have two energy levels now. There's only one place I can do that, and that's around the outside. I can't go inside the second energy level. So watch. If I wanted to go from fluorine to chlorine, I'd have to put the energy level out here. And what happens to the radius? Well, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It got bigger. The distance from the center to the outermost electrons, center of the nucleus to the outermost electrons, that just got further, larger. The atomic radius increased. Well, every other trend that also occurs as you move down a group occurs because you are adding energy levels. You're increasing the number of energy levels. Right? The other thing that happens when you add energy levels is prior to adding that third energy level. So right now, if I look at the seven valence electrons here for fluorine and for chlorine, but for fluorine, there's only one energy level between the nucleus and the valence electrons. It's these two guys. Those two electrons are screening. They're running interference between the nucleus and the outermost valence electrons. So only one energy level of screening. But if I add a, another energy level to make chlorine, now there are two energy levels of electrons screening or interfering with that attraction between the nucleus and the outermost valence electrons. We call that shielding. So by adding energy levels, not only do you put the electrons further away from the nucleus, you now have more levels of shielding inside that new energy level. Okay? So as you move across a period, only one of those two factors changes. The nuclear charge increases. So that is the reason for every trend that occurs as you move across a period. But as you move down a group, not only does the nuclear charge increase, the number of energy levels increases. And when you increase the number of energy levels, that is what ends up, that trumps the increase in nuclear charge. So the cause of every trend that occurs as you move down a group is that you increase the number of energy levels. Period. End of story. No pun intended. Okay? So make sure if you have any questions, you ask them in class, and we will see you tomorrow. Cheers.